Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at accounts payable management. Usually accounts payable is one of the largest sources of short term financing and for some company for some companies could be the main source of financing. If you don't have loans, you might buy your product, your services on account. So it's going to be a large portion of your liabilities or the largest. So it's very important that we know how to manage this. Now accounts payable is covered both on the BEC section and on the FAR section on the CPA exam. That's why I always tell students, first complete FAR, because FAR is the basics for other topics. So for example, in FAR you have learned that accounts payable is created when you debit an asset or an expense, when you create an asset or an expense and you buy it on account, you credit accounts payable. So this is the basic idea of accounts payable. So you have to be familiar with that idea. And that's why FAR is important to take before BEC, before audit. Now, if you're studying for the CPA exam, most likely you would have a CPA course. That's great. Keep your CPA course. FarhatLectures.com can be a supplemental tool, a useful addition to your CPA review course. I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam by explaining the material differently, helping you understand your CPA review course better, which in turn will help you do better on the CPA exam which in turn will increase your university CPA score, your average score of your university. And if you're interested in knowing how well your university is doing, please take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. To try me out, to see if I can help you or not, you only have to pay one month of subscription to try me, just to try it. If you like it, you keep the subscription. If not, you cancel. So your maximum risk is one month of subscription. Are you willing to take that risk to find out whether I can help you or, or not? I have, I have helped hundreds, if not thousands of students over the years. I do have resources for other courses as well. If you haven't connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so and take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Subscribe to my channel, like, share, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, I'm very active, Twitter, and please connect with me on Reddit. So as I said, accounts payable is a major financing source for companies. So what is accounts payable? You buy something and they give you some time to pay. Now when they when they give you that some time to pay, it's called the discount period. It's expressed something like this, two slash 10 and 30 or three slash 10 and 30. You need to understand how to read those rate, uh, how, how to read those discounts. It means 2% within 10 days. So if you pay within 10 days, you'll get 2% off. Otherwise, the payment is due in 30 days. So this is the credit period. The credit period is 30 days. If you pay within 10 days, you will get a discount. Now, on the CPA exam, they want you to know, do you know how much is the discount, the savings on the discount? And here's how you compute the savings on the discount. I'm going to show you the formula. Then I'm going to show you a quick way to find the answer without even going through the formula. Because on the CPA exam, speed is important. Now, it's important to, that you know the formula, but it's also more important if you can answer the questions without performing any computation. And the formula goes something like this. You will take 360 days divided by pay period minus, and I'm going to explain this, minus the discount period. Well, I, yeah, this uh, minus the discount period. Then you multiply this by the discount divided by 100% minus the discount. And don't worry, this is a easy, really easy formula. Okay. So what are we saying here? Well, 360 is 360. Let's fill in what's what's required. The pay period is the credit period. Well, let's not call it pay period. I'm going to, since I, to, to keep the terminology consistent, I'm going to call it your credit period. Your credit period is 30 days. So you'll take 30 days minus the discount period. The discount period, I told you it's 10 days if you pay within 10 days. So here's what's happened. You take 360, which is, this is how many days in a year. And if they told you to use 365, use 365. Usually they're going to say 360. Be careful whatever they tell you in the problem. 360 divided by 20. Now, what is this 20? This is how many days you are paying earlier. So you are saving 20 days. Okay. You multiply this by the discount rate, which happens to be 2%. 0.02 or 2% divided by 1 minus 2%, which is 0.98. Now, if you know anything, 2 divided by 1 is 2%. 2 divided by 0.98 is a little bit over. This is going to be a little bit over 2%. It's going to be a little bit over 2%. Why? Because 2 divided by 1, I'm sorry, 
2 divided by 100 is 2%, or, two, or 0 0.02 divided by 1 equal to exactly 2%. So 0 0.2 divided by 0.98 is a little bit over 2%. You can say approximately 2%, but it's a little bit over. Now, so you're saving approximately 2%. And how many times are you saving this two percent? Well, if you if you are paying, if you are paying ten days on on day ten, and we're assuming you're paying on day ten, you're saving one two percent every twenty days. So what does that mean? How many twenty days do we have in a year? Three sixty. So now that's three sixty divided by twenty. This should be around eighteen. Okay, around eighteen. Now what you do is you will take eighteen. So you're, you're saving this 2% 18 times a year. You will take 18 times approximately 2%. So it should be around 38 to 40% the savings. Now you can exactly find this. I, if, if you want to try it, it's going to be approximately between 38 to 40%, something in that ballpark. Now, if I told you that your discount rate happens to be 1%, the discount rate is 1%, well, guess what? Then you're going to be saving 1%, a pro little bit over 1%, a little bit over 1%, 18 times the year. So your your discount rate, it's going to, your your savings is approximately 18 plus, 18% plus. It's a little bit over 18%. So any number below 18%, you would eliminate. Any number that's so far away from 18%, you eliminate. Now, if you, you're given 18.02, you know, let's assume you're given 18.19 and 19%, then I would say do some computation that's going to be closer to 18%. But what I'm trying to say is you should be able to ballpark the savings, to ballpark the savings without doing any computation. Now, remember, it's the discount period minus the, I'm sorry, the credit period minus the discount period. So this is the credit period. So the credit period minus the discount period is you're saving, you're, you're doing those savings every 20 days. Very easy questions if you understand this. Again, you don't have you don't have to do the computation. You should be able to do it. For example, if the discount rate, for example, let me just without doing any computation. Again, if the discount rate of the they're giving me three percent, I'm saving three percent every eighteen times. That's that's quite a bit of savings, good savings for the year. So just so you can ballpark your numbers. Okay. What other method to manage accounts payable? Well, guess what? If you're making the payment, you want to slow down the disbursement as much as possible. Okay, how do you do that? Well, rather than sending them wire, write them a check. And not only write checks, write checks from geographical area that's distant from your customers. So if you know your customers are in New York, you write checks from LA, okay? It's a different it's a different Federal Reserve Bank. So it takes longer for the check to uh, to, to to clear. It's gonna give you more, it's gonna give your money more time in your bank account. And also mail checks from remote areas, from remote post offices. Again, it's gonna delay the process. That's the point. The point is to de delay the process. Now, this is debatable on two reasons, on ethical and economic grounds, because you have to understand what's your What's that when you say two percent within ten days? Is it you have do they have to receive the payment by day ten or is the mail has to be dated by two ten? If it's dated by two ten, you don't mail it until day ten and you mail it from LA and you mail it from a remote office. So it's gonna take five, six, and during coronavirus it may take a month for them to get it. But if it's the posted date, then that's the posted date. Okay? So again, Again, the, the, this this topic is becoming less and less relevant, and the reason is not 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 straightforward. But the reason is simple: most companies now they they make payments. Guess what? Using electronic funds. Okay. But if if I was a company and I want to manage my cash, I don't. I would like to receive my payment in direct fund, di direct uh, transfer from the bank, but my disbursement will be made in a check. Also, what companies can do, they can do what's called the zero balance account. What are zero, zero balance account? You will make an agreement with your bank account that you will have two accounts. One is a main account, and you might have some sub accounts or accounts. And what happened is this. So if this is the main account, what you do, you will create that sub account. And this sub account, for example, it's going to pay your suppliers. The sub account is for your suppliers. So what you do is you 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 keep a, a zero balance in this account. So only you transfer money to this account when you need to when the when you need to ch clear the checks. Okay. So what is that going to do? Because if you have a regular account, if you have two accounts, if you have two main accounts, you have to in one of the account you have to keep a minimum balance. 
you know, you have to keep a minimum balance. You don't want to tie up any minimum balance. So you would say this account, you call it zero balance account. Zero balance means I will not transfer money until I have payments on this account. Therefore, I only have to keep, I only have to tie up the money in the main account, a minimum balance. Okay, so you'll have one for your suppliers and usually companies use one for payroll as internal control. So this is what you do. Zero balance accounts where you only transfer the money when needed. So you don't need a safety dollar amount in the zero balance account. You only need the safety amount, a minimum balance in your main account. Also, another way to do this is to con something called controlled disbursement account. Again, what you do is if it's you're doing a wire, you only transfer the money to that account when that when the day of the payment. So you don't have to keep any extra money there. Again, those are topics. The, the key in accounts payable is to delay the disbursement as much as possible. And the opposite is true. When we deal with account receivable management, you want to receive the payment as early as possible. Once again, at the end of this recording, I'm going to remind you, if you are studying for your CPA exam, give me a chance. Take a look at my material. I don't replace your CPA review course. I work along hand in hand with them. Not, not, not along with them themselves, the company, along their material. So I can help you. With it, with any course you are taking, I can help you succeed. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.